What's going on, Malakis? VNNCC3 here, and let's spend some QOTY TIME gaming with each other, and this video will be a beginner's guide on how to build a deck that will actually work. And no, I'm not going to promise you that you're going to win all your matches after watching this video. Instead, I'll promise that your win percentage will drastically go up as you master deck building as a whole, regardless if the deck you're using or going up against is net decked or brewed up. And before we get into the deck building guide, I'd like to give you some really good advice that's going to help you further better yourself as a player. Remember Scoobs, losing is part of the game, and understanding why you lost is so much more important than telling yourself the IF. And what I mean by that is phrases like only if I had one more land or if I went first. The coulda, woulda, shoulda approach will substantially stunt your growth as a player. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. There's three questions though that you need to ask yourself before you even start building a deck. The first being what archetype you want to build. Second being, what kind of mana base does that actually need to support it? And thirdly, you know, what's your sideboard plan looking like? You have a choice between aggro, control, or mid-range as far as your archetype goes. Building your mana base should be a concern when deck building because you can't cast spells without the proper amount of mana. Monocolor decks usually have a much easier mana base to build than say a 2 or a 3 color deck. In a 2 or a 3 color deck, you typically want your mana base to be able to provide 12 to 16 types of each mana source in it depending on how dominant the colors are. If it's just a 1 or a 2 card splash then these numbers are way too high. You can achieve this by using dual lands and other types of non-basic lands. In monocolor decks, you generally want 18 or more lands that produce the same kind of mana you need to cast your spells, and then you can feel free to use utility lands to fill in the rest if you'd like. I'll go into the game plan of each archetype in a nutshell. Aggro's plan is to get and stay on board until you win. You should almost never give up tempo for card advantage because you really don't intend on playing the late game. The game plan for mid-range is adapt and overcome. Mid-range isn't aggro nor is it control, in fact actually it's a little bit of both put together. And you know, some players call mid-range decks just pile of good cards because your spells and creatures are generally really powerful on their own and they generate a lot of value that way. Control's game plan is extremely simple. It's basically shut down your opponent's game plan by dismantling it with various removal and permission cards and then winning the game at its own convenience. Building a sideboard is a very tricky thing. You typically want to aim your sideboard against your really bad and or mirror matchups. What cards and how many of them to add is entirely up to you, but you should always keep your deck's main plan in mind when building a sideboard. Just as an example, it doesn't make a lot of sense for a control player to have 15 creature cards in their sideboard because the main goal of a control deck is to do exactly that, control. But it doesn't hurt you to add a few creatures to your sideboard provided they go along with your game plan or they're specifically against your really bad matchups. Let's go ahead and look at a few net decks that have been proven to be successful and then let's build a deck of our own based off of what we've seen. First up on the list is going to be this sweet Rakdos aggro deck and let me tell you Scoobs, this deck has been an absolute powerhouse and standard for a really long time now. Let's go to deck details and the first thing that stands out to me is the average cost per card only being 2.33. That tells me that this deck is extremely low to the ground, it gets on board, stays on board and just wins the game as fast as possible. So pretty much aggro in a nutshell. Now. Let me put a disclaimer out there, right, Scoobs? Not all aggro decks are going to have a low average mana cost per card. Some of them are going to be really high, like if you played green aggro or green stompy, which is basically green aggro, its average mana cost is going to be significantly higher than 2.33. But it doesn't change the fact that it is an aggro deck, right? And to me, in my opinion, what really makes an aggro deck is the creatures. Most if not all aggro decks out there are going to be really creature dense and this one not being any different. It's got 24 creatures and it's got 12 non-creatures. Next up is going to be Grixis Midrange and you know Scoobs even though this deck is newer in the meta it's been winning tournaments and top 8s quite frequently. So let's go ahead and look at these deck details here. So the average cost per card is 3.12. Now the reason why the cost is so low Scoobs is because the deck at 
itself plays a lot of just really good cheap effective removal like magma spray a braid and harness lightning and if you remember what i said earlier in the video scoops almost all mid-range decks play just really powerful cards on their own like they don't need any help from anything else they're just really really strong on their own cards like nickel bolus are just extremely powerful not only is this card typically a two for one and what i mean by that is that when you play it your opponent has to discard a card if it comes out on the field right your opponent has to discard a card and then typically speaking if they want to take this card off the field they've got to expend another card so it's a two for one which is always going to be in your favor and if they don't take care of this card it can easily just run away with the game regardless if you can flip it into the nickel bolus the arisen the planeswalker or it just stays on the table as it is usually speaking this card can end the game in five turns or less as soon as it comes out into the field whether you get the ultimate or whether it just attacks for lethal whatever the case is this card alone can win the game for you and lastly we've got our control decks and let me make sure i make a note here for you scoops not all control decks are non-creature based but the one we're looking at right now is going to be a non-creature based deck and if you're wondering about a creature based control deck you know scoops that's really advanced i will handle that at a much later time but let's look at these deck details shall we average mana cost per card is 3.24 and it's playing 26 lands and as you can see here is zero creatures and as i said before not all control decks are creatureless there's actually quite a few of them out there that rely heavily upon their creatures to perform certain tasks or you know to hate on certain cards or whatever the case may be um, but for, like i said for this purpose we're doing a non-creature based control deck so most of these types of decks that are like this usually play about 27 lands this one just happens to play 26 and just like most if not all control decks out there they play a slew of removal cards like side of the wreckage you know you guys can read the text i'm not going to go over it cards like cast out cards like fatal push <sighs> Then comes the permission spells, the may I resolve this spells, the I just want to pull my hair out of my head spells in the form of like essence scatter, uh, disallow, soft permission spells like supreme will, you know, commit memory I would say is kind of a permission spell, but all in all, the control player basically is trying to end your game plan and win the game at their convenience all right scoop so the deck that i built is going to be a mono blue aggro deck i made sure it was extremely basic to the point and tempo 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 was always at the front of my mind so let's go over these cards dive down for one blue mana it's an instant uh Hexproof is amazing in this meta. It really is. Everybody's, everybody's playing spot removal. Not only that, but that toughness can come into play if you're trying to play like a combat trick in any amounts. Uh, Siren Storm Tamer. This is just an all-around really good card. One blue mana, one one flyer, which is not bad. Um, not really great though, but the, the text on it really is relevant. You pay one blue, you sacrifice it, and it allows you to keep one of your larger threats on the table or keep yourself safe from spells or abilities. The sensor... Yeah, every deck pretty much needs a little bit of disruption and sensor is perfect for that uh on your turn two the only card that's fighting for the slot right now for sensor is surge mare but we'll get to that in a bit okay um and sensor is going to allow you to disrupt your opponent's turn two or turn three play um because a lot of times players tap out for that and if it's drawn later in the game you pay one blue mana you discard it you draw a new card it takes care of itself uh, merfolk trickster this is just a really really good card it really really is um it's a two mana two two flash so you can play at an instant and it basically erases all the text on a creature so it makes it a vanilla creature uh surge mirror is just an all-around really good card it really really is a really good card uh champion of wits this is going to help you fix the lands and your hand basically it's going to allow you to fix the hand that you've been dealt uh, not only that, but the Eternalize, the feature on it, it comes into play later in the game, so it helps you fight those longer matchups if it does go that long. Uh, Exclusion Mage. Uh, there's a lot of players playing bounce cards when they're playing blue. Exclusion Mage bounces a creature with a body attached to it, so it's pretty nice. Tempest Gen. This is your main win condition in your deck. Tempest Gen just gets larger as the game goes by. The toughness doesn't necessarily get larger, but its power does, and it can quickly close out a game if it's ever left unchecked. 
Tempest Caller, this creature is going to allow you to make an alpha strike on your opponent. So when it comes into play, it taps all your opponent's creatures, and so you can swing with the entire team. We're not going to go into sideboard because, well, I would just need a lot more time with that. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. But y'all know what I'm talking about though, right? Love peace and chicken grease. Be safe. Thanks for stopping by. To spend some of your quality time. And uh, yeah, stay classy.